Well, Jesus says, I'm worthy of that kind of faith. I'm worthy of somebody that you can trust. Why? Because I not only said and did all the things that you read about, but I said I was going to come back from the dead, and I did it. And here I am to show you who I am. One of my favorite examples of believing when I don't see it comes from Hebrews 11.5. Take a look at your outline. It says this, by faith, who? Who is it talking about? Noah. Noah. When warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. Now get this picture. Noah is out in the middle of nowhere, miles from the nearest ocean. I want you to get the picture. He's in Palmdale right now. You guys ever been to Palmdale? Yes. Nothing in Palmdale, right? They got the, well, never mind. I won't go there. <laughs> Some of you might live in Palmdale. <laughs> He's out in the middle of the desert. There's not an ocean around. There's not a pool big enough to hold the ark. And God says, I want you to build this ark because I'm going to bring judgment upon the world. And for 40 days and for 40 nights, it's going to rain and I'm going to flood the entire world. It sounds reasonable, right? God making it rain. You guys seen it rain before, right? Okay. I want you to get this up. Up until that point in human history, it had never rained before. The Bible says that no rain had ever come from the sky. And here he is, Noah, out in the, out in the desert. And God comes to him and says, Noah, I want you to build this amazing boat. And it's going to save you and your family and their wives. And it's going to save all the animals in the world. And Noah, I want you to build this amazing boat. And trust me, rain is going to come. Pretty hard thing to believe. God, you're going to send what? What's rain? I've never seen that before. I've never even heard of that before, God. Noah did exactly what he did. He built this huge boat. God kept his word. Let me take this a little bit more inward and make it a little bit more personal to you this morning. Is there an area in your life that you need to trust more, put your trust in God more than you have been for something that you just can't see happening? Let me try to say it again. Is there an area in your life that you need to trust God more in, even though you can't see it happening? That's faith. Trusting God. Trusting in the one who can do anything. Whatever it is, whatever it is this morning, your health problems. Maybe you have health issues and you're saying, God, I just need to trust you. It could be relationship problems. It could be a decision about your future. You just don't know what the future holds. But are you willing to say, God... Even though I can't see it, I know who you are. I know who you've been to me. I'm going to trust you. Faith is believing when you can't see it. And I want you to give you another one. Take a look at this. <clears throat> Faith, number two, is obeying when I don't understand it. Faith is obeying when I don't understand it. It's not only believing when I don't see it. It's obeying when I don't even understand it. If you've ever uh, been in this, this situation before, God has asked you to do something and he never really told you why. You kind of know where I'm talking about here. You're obeying even though you don't understand it. Has God ever asked you to do something or go somewhere or call someone? Has anybody ever felt like God has told you to do something like that? And you didn't really know why, but you did it anyway? Okay, some of you. How about this? Maybe you felt like God was going to do something impossible of your life, and there was no way that you could humanly see that it was going to happen. Has God ever done something like that in your life? Well, I want you to know that you're in good company. There was a man in the Bible, his name was Abraham, and God told him he was going to do some amazing things in his life. I want you to notice what he told him in Hebrews 11.8. Looking back at the Old Testament, the writer of Hebrews writes this. He says, it was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave his home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. God comes to Abraham and he says, Abraham, get up, pack your bags. Pack up the tent. I'm moving you to another land and I'm going to make it your home. But I want you to notice this. He says he went without knowing where, where he was going. God says, get up, go. Abraham goes, where am I going, God? How many of you ever just got in place, got up and got in your car, just drove, got lost? 
Abraham's wandering around. He's like, where am I going, God? And God says, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you exactly when you need to know where you need to go. And Abraham believed God and he got up and he packed his stuff and he went. That's funny to me that he would just get up and go. It's amazing. I want you to notice another time when God looked, worked in his life. In Hebrews 11, 11 through 12, it says, By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, what does that mean, you guys? He was old, right? Very good. And Sarah herself was barren. What does that mean? She couldn't have kids. Okay, she didn't have kids. We got a man who's old. We got any old guys in here? Oh, Dan, you, thanks for admitting it, brother. <laughs> we got this old guy named Abraham, and he's got this wife, and she can have kids. I want you to notice what he says. And Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had the promise. God gave him a promise. Abraham considered God to be faithful. And it says this, and so the a whole nation came from this one man, a nation with so many people that like the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore, there was no way to count them. Now, if God asked you or came to you and said, I'm going to do something amazing in your life and all you have to do is to believe, would you be willing to believe? You know, uh, I like to ask questions. You know, when Jennifer sends me somewhere or we're going on a trip somewhere, I want to know where I'm going. And I have to Google it or MapQuest it and just figure it out. Where am I going? I don't like to just get up and go. But if God was to come to you this morning and said, I want you to do this and you didn't know why, you couldn't see it, you didn't understand it, you just knew that God was calling you to do something, would you be willing to do it? Would you be willing to obey even though you didn't understand Abraham was. God did a miracle in his life. He made this family out of this woman who was old, way past her, her birthing years, and somebody who had never been able to have children before. He gave them this whole nation, the nation of the Jews. I want to give you another thing. What else does real faith involve? Number three, it involves giving when I don't have it. Giving when I don't have it. By faith, Abel was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offering. Now, I realize that talking about money in church is a touchy subject, isn't it? Because it hits us right where we live. I don't have my wallet today. In our wallet. Pretend I'm holding the wallet. Where, where is my wallet? <laughs> I hope it's in my office. <laughs> Some people believe that when you go to church, all they want is your money, right? We do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> so, some people say, you know, if that's all they want, I'm not going to go to church. And they avoid it altogether. But I want you to understand this issue of giving or tithing or sacrificing of your own personal time. It's not something that, that God just says, I want you to do it just for the sake of doing it. He tells us to do these things because it's a trust issue. I had to learn that God was really going to be faithful with the things I gave him. That God not only was going to take what I, get, what I offered, but he was going to take it and he was going to turn it around. And he was going to make it more and better than I ever thought of. I want to give you an example of this, okay? I asked for a volunteer earlier. Do you have your purse with you? Okay, bring it up. Come on up. Everybody, this is Jackie. Give Jackie a hand for coming up. Put your purse there, Jackie. Let me show you how this idea of trust works, okay? Jackie, I told you I was going to invite you up, but I didn't tell you why, right? Right. Okay. This is the reason I'm, gonna, I'm having you up here. I'm going to ask you to give me some things from your purse, and I'm going to try. I'm going to ask you to trust me to take them, which you're never going to get back. <laughs> but, but you guys are laughing. Uh, I want you to trust me that whatever you give me in your purse, whatever I give back to you is going to be much more. You okay. think you can trust me with that? Okay. Okay, do you have $5 in your purse? Yeah. 
Can I have it? Okay. <laughs> hey, I like this. <laughs> Do you have any uh, jewelry in your purse? No. Are you, oh, you're wearing a watch. Let me see it. <laughs> it's a nice one. It, 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 re, it rebuts itself with the scent. It does. That's yeah. it's a cool watch. Yeah. Was it kind of expensive? It was a gift. It was a gift. Yeah. Okay, well, let me just let me just restate. Wait, wait. Don't put that wallet away. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot more money in there. Um, okay. I'm going to ask you to trust me, right? 